this your personality at the moment is brother who? <laughs> brother Ju. Can I get files? <laughs> <laughs> brother Ju is a wonderful guy. <laughs> got my certificate, okay? I'm a barrister. Address me with respect. Thank you, dear. Nyam chum, nyam chum, and ugali. Hi guys and welcome to VIP Access with Aniko. Today I'm linking up with Nigeria's most talented and most versatile artist. Many of you probably know him from acclaimed albums like Stories That Touch that dropped in 2015 or Moral Instruction that dropped in 2019. I'm talking about the man who's a super musician, he's a super actor, comedian, he's a lawyer too. I'm very lucky to be with him today and I'm introducing um, Mr. Files the bad guy. Hi, Files. Hey, yo, hey, yo, man. What up, man? Bad guys in the building, man. What up? What's really good? Thank you so much. You're um, a musician, you're an actor, you're a lawyer, you're a comedian. You are, a, you sing sometimes, you rap too, you write, you're a composer. Damn, like, what, how many personalities do you even carry? Man, there are many, there are many. Um, I think I'm just, I, I, I like art. I, I appreciate and I love making art, you know, just art of any form. So be it music, be it um, comedy, be it film, you know, just any kind of art, you know, that, that really, 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 um, you know, appeals to me. Um, that's why, and I feel like no human being should ever, should ever be limited. No human being should ever feel like, oh, I'm this, and that's the only thing I should ever do. So this, your personality at the moment is Brother Who? <laughs> brother Ju. Um, brother Ju is a very uh, wonderful gentleman. Uh, most people do look at him as though maybe he's literate, but then he's somebody that I do go to foreign school, but people are, you are, you are judgmental, that's a problem, but it's okay. It's all right. First, I don't like Brother Taju. Why? Stones. Can I get files? <laughs> But I do, he's a wonderful guy. <laughs> he's a sweet guy. The ladies love him. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can get Faust. Faust is here too. <laughs> okay, so congratulations on everything you've done. Big break probably came in like 2015-ish. Maybe end of 2014. Um, so there was one song off um, my very first album, which was What's Up Guy? The album, right before Story and such. There was one song of that project called Marry Me, featuring Yemi Aladi and Paul. Um, that song started to pick up and you know, that was around the same time I started to do um, all these like short funny skits on Instagram and um, YouTube and whatever. And then people started to know about me and they were like, who is this, who is this lunatic of a person? What is wrong with this guy? And, you know, around the same time, the, ja the jam was buzzing. That was when I think the, the, the big break started. Then in 2015, I now dropped Stories That Touch. That definitely cemented, you know, the entire thing and my place um, in, uh, I think, mainstream uh, entertainment. The first film-related thing I did, I did must have been in like 2015 or so. Um, a, film, a film called Couple of Days. And then after that, um, very popularly, I, I featured in a, in a, what's it called in a TV show called Jennifer's Diary. That uh, that, that was a big one, uh, really big appearance, and that also won me the AMVCA award for the best actor in a comedy, 2016, I believe that was. Um, yeah. Then you won another AMVCA. AMVCA for. Um, Best yes, actor in sports year in a sports year for my for my yeah in a 2018 year for my role in uh, the film called New Money. It's just amazing, man. It's amazing, you know, being able to get all these accolades. You, you never really plan for all these things, man. You never plan for all these. You don't set out saying, okay, I plan that next year they are going to nominate me for yeah. here this year. Yeah. No, it doesn't really work like that. You know, you just put in the work and hope that you, you get recognized. And when all these things come, it's amazing. Generally, I I think there's a decent relationship between entertainers out here and it's, it's good to see you're also a lawyer and actually um studied and has have a degree and graduated from um the law school of abuja tell me about that like it's the life we chose that could have been in chambers no regrets it's not a papers um 
If you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, don't regret anything. I did practice for a short while. And, you know, even though it was for a short while, I, I did enjoy my time in practice. Law is something that I actually genuinely enjoyed. And, of course, I come from a legal background. My dad and my mom are lawyers in the same firm. And that was where I was practicing as well, the same firm. And um, it, was, it was an interesting time. But at some point in time, entertainment started to pick up for me. And it was almost like doing the two together. It was, it was, I was, at some point, I was being Clark Kent. You know, lawyer by day, rapper by night. You know, I transform. The, um, you know, when it's like 6, 7 p.m. <laughs> Take off the suit. <laughs> And my, my superhero costume is underneath, you know, um, but it was, it was interesting, but at some point in time, I just sort of had to choose and choose entertainment, which I'm more passionate about. Is this okay, you know, with the people around you, your support system, your family, are they okay um, that you're now, you know, doing what you want to do? 100%. My parents are my biggest fans. They've always supported me, you know, they've, right from day one, you know, they've never at any point in time stood against um me doing what i'm doing one sort of has to be careful you know with african parents you know because you don't know how they're gonna take it and the typical thing is for them to be like never you know i'm not gonna do that not in my house but um, it wasn't really like that with my parents it was um it was more while i was studying they were more concerned about you know just me carrying through uh with my education and not getting to any point where i felt like I wanted to drop out or anything like that. You know, that was the the more con the, the, that was the thing they were more concerned about. Um, but of course, I uh, I followed through with that. I completed everything. I got my certificate. Okay, I'm a barrister. Address me with respect. Thank you, dear. <laughs> what can't you do? Swim. <laughs> For real? I can't swim, dear. Um, I never learned. It, it's really as in it's something that really hurt me, but I cannot swim. It's, uh, it's a very serious case. If you drop me in the ocean today, it's going to be a tragedy. Most recent album, um, Moral Instruction. And this album is really conscious in the fact that you're talking about the societal ills and kind of just making the people listening question some of the decisions they're making on the day-to-day -day or the society that, that they're living in. So um, is this the direction um, you're going to be taking or what prompted you to produce such an album? Like I said, it's art, you know, and um, I'm someone that is moved to make different forms of art. And at that point in time, um, January 2019, um, that was the emotion that I was feeling and you know I, I had to convey that emotion in that manner it was a very intense album definitely gonna <laughs> gonna have to admit that it was very intense it was very in your face it was very you know attacking it was very <laughs> it was very rebellious you know and bold and bold and, and reactionary but at that point in time that was the emotion I wanted to convey, convey because that's how I felt like everyone was feeling and that's how i felt like everyone should be feeling you know or should have been feeling at that point in time so it was um it was uh, definitely a very conscious album um what we were going through in the social political space i touched on heavily on in all those songs and um i'm glad i'm glad i did that project i think it's actually definitely one of my favorite projects mine too actually my favorite song is hypocrites and the video you don't even have to um, understand pigeon or everything, but if you see the video, you will actually understand, you know, what this person is talking about. And some of the, those things are happening in my country, and I think in so many other countries. Some of these problems are actually African problems, and thank you so much. What should we expect from Files in 2020? You know, we already had a dope album in 2019, and I feel like you're always surprising us. When you put out um, the album to 27, it was a surprise. and. Also, when you dropped the EP with Simi, it was also a beautiful surprise. You know, we wanted more collaborations, but we did not expect an entire EP. So what else do you have up your sleeves? You know this, man. My surprise albums are always coming. So stay tuned. Ah, there's a surprise album. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is the year 2020. This is the beginning of a new decade. So you know that something special must come this year. Um, I'm working on projects. I'm working on a, 
and an album working on an EP as, as well so at any at any point in time I may drop anything I just want to say thank you very much for hosting me right here in your studio it has been great to talk to you and I do wish you the best in everything that you do God bless your talent um, thank you for entertaining us all through and through from your social media to the films to the music to each and everything that you touch um, that turns to gold anything you want to tell your fans who are watching um, big shout out to everyone out there, everyone that's supporting Files the Bad Guy, everybody that's following the brand. Yeah, thanks so much. Kisses. VIP Access is capping off from Lagos, Nigeria. Every week I'll be talking to an African superstar. This week might be your favorite star from another country. Ciao, ciao.